Node version 22 is now available. I am very excited about this launch. I have been clued in from a handful of people on the Node team. There's some really cool stuff in here. It's not a massive release like you would expect from something like a new Next version or a new React version, but the subtlety of the cool stuff added here is something I'm scared people will miss. So I want to take the time to break it all down with you. We're excited to announce the release of Node version 22. Highlights include requiring ES modules, a WebSocket client, updates to the V8 JavaScript engine, and more. Node 22 will enter long-term support in October, but until then, it will be the new current release for the next six months. I encourage you to explore the new features and benefits offered by the latest release and evaluate their potential impact on your applications. The LTS thing is important to call out because not many of us can actually use Node 22 right now because we have to wait on Lambda to add it. And once Lambda adds it, then we can use it on things like Vercel. It's important to understand the LTS process. LTS means long-term support. So this is going to be supported for a while. Node 18 and 20, if I recall, are both still being supported. So here you can see with the LTS releases, they stay active for much longer and they're maintained for much longer as well. So Node 21, since it wasn't an LTS, has already stopped being maintained. Well, it's about to stop being maintained is halfway through May and June, we should see that drop off. Whereas 22 will become the active release in October and that will be maintained for quite a while. Node 18 is still being maintained and will be until April, 2025. And Node 20 is still being maintained. Obviously it's still the active version that'll be maintained for a while. The other important thing to know is when you can actually use these new Node versions. I, as a Vercel user, am also using Lambda and Lambda doesn't always support the latest Node versions. For example, Lambda only started supporting Node 20 in November last year. So it's only been about five months since Node 20 has been usable on Lambda without running your own instance. And that's quite a bit after it came out. Like Node 20 has been the current release for quite a while. And yeah, so know that it's going to be a bit before we can take advantage of Node 22 on things like Lambda. But hopefully we'll see these releases get to us in our infrastructure sooner rather than later. I understand why it takes a while, but it has historically taken way too long. And I'm hopeful, very hopeful, we'll see Node 22 on Lambda and as such on Vercel and other providers very soon. Especially when you consider how big of a performance win we got from Node 20, which was unexpected. Cold starts got quite a bit better. Okay, apparently Node 22 is planned for November of this year. So it'll be a little bit, but exciting that we'll have it so much sooner than I'm used to with these new releases. You, the viewer, if you notice this is a little bit jank, I'm very sorry about that. I didn't know this article existed when I filmed the first video, so we're gonna be taking cuts from both. I promise that this will be somewhat cohesive. Shout out to FaZe for making it possible. Anyways. The project continues to make progress across a number of areas with many new features and fixes flowing into the existing LTS releases. For that reason, the changes outlined in this changelog for Node 22 only represent a small subset of the features and work since the last major. Also a really good call out. It's cool that some of the things in this release are actually in the older versions because they honor the LTS really well. They don't just do maintenance updates, they actually push features to Node 20 even though Node 22 was coming soon. Really nice. This blog will add some additional context on the larger body of work in relation to those changes. One other cool thing in the release that you might not have seen is that there is now for Windows an ARM64 build. Yes, they're finally supporting Windows on ARM. They're the only ones I know who are. <laughs> Anyways, notable changes. The first big one is that V8's been updated to 12.4. I thought this would be a bigger deal than it was. The thing I wanted to show is that the uh, Node-P process version in node version 20 is actually a major version behind on the version of a v8 so i thought there would be even more features added here wasn't the case a lot of the cool features i was excited about got backported but there are still a few including array from async the set methods and the iterator helpers these are both huge if you don't already know about the set methods and the iterator helpers check out my video on all the fun features coming to javascript because these are really cool but the V8 change isn't just new features in JavaScript, it's also the new Maglev compiler, which is enabled by default on supporting architecture. Maglev improves performance for short-lived CLI programs. Really cool stuff. It's an update to the JIT compiler, and it means if you're running a quick CLI, it's gonna be way faster and use less memory. Huge changes, very exciting stuff. The JIT's getting jittier every day. Support for requiring synchronous ESM graphs is also very hype. This release adds require support for synchronous ESM graphs under the flag dash dash experimental require module. If you have this flag on, the ECMAScript modules being loaded by require have to meet the following requirements. They have to be explicitly marked as an ES module with a type module field in the package JSON, and they have to be fully synchronous, so they have to have no top level await. But if these two things are true about your package, you can now use require to include ESM packages, which means for the first time ever, you can ship just ESM and it works in most node things. Huge win. 
really exciting stuff. I'm amazed this took so long. I, I have to say this feels like Bun bullied them a bit because Bun had the ability to do ESM and CJS imports in the same file where you'd have a require and import next to each other and it works as expected. This isn't that absurd, but at the very least, it lets you use require for ESM, which will allow us to finally really start moving off CJS. Require will load the requested module as an ES module and it will return the module namespace object. In this case, it's similar to dynamic import, but it's run synchronously and it returns the namespace object directly. We intend to eventually enable require ESM by default in the future without the flag. This will be huge, 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 huge. Once the majority of Node is running a version where this is the case, we can finally really start to kill ESM. Whew. Running package.json scripts. Node 22 includes a new experimental feature for the ex execution of scripts from the package.json with the CLI flag node dash dash run the script. It also supports node dash dash run test, which executes the test command inside of package.json scripts. This is cool because npm run start and things like that are actually quite slow, like annoyingly so. Did I say kill ESM? I'm sorry, I meant to kill CJS. Obviously we want ESM, not CJS. Sorry, brains are hard and these like shorthands are obnoxious. Anyways. As I was saying about the package.json scripts, node dash dash run is really nice because npm's run is slow. And according to this PR, even without making the C++ optimizations that Yag wants to do, we're still seeing a 200 millisecond difference between node run and npm run. Here we see that the npm run test got 97 runs taking about 33 milliseconds each, but the npm run for the same code took 212 milliseconds. That's insane. So yeah. This is a really nice change. And again, like this is one of those things bun did well. Like when you bun run script, it just happens immediately. Like bun run index.js. I have the deno thing in there from my previous take. It just instantaneously runs versus node run index.js. What's it mad about? Oh, is this node index.js? Yeah, sorry. Because we don't have run in the old version. You get the idea. Sorry. The new thing is for running things from your package JSON, which is in here, if you have test or you have other scripts in here, those will now run much faster. It's a nice change. It's very needed. But that's not the only change that they're making to running things with Node. The one I'm more excited about, we'll get to in a minute, is the watch mode. But first, we have to talk about the stream default high watermark. Increase the default high watermark for streams from 16 kilobytes to 64 kilobytes. This provides a performance boost across the board at the cost of slightly higher memory usage. Users in memory safe environments are encouraged to explicitly set the set default high watermark. Nice. This is for when you're streaming data, reading from your system, getting things from the internet, etc. The ability to have more stuff in your buffer allows you to grab way more data per chunk. It just lets a lot of things be faster. But if you're in an environment that is sensitive to memory usage, probably not going to benefit a lot from this. And you might even end up having your program crash when it runs out of memory. So the ability to set it with an explicit call is useful. Now for watch mode. This one's really hype. From this release, watch mode is considered stable. When in watch mode, changes in the watch files cause the node process to restart. <sighs> This one was a painful, long history. Who's familiar with Watchman? Drop a one in chat if Watchman has ever given you shit. I want to see a lot of ones in chat. Because the, the good old days of Watchman, see all the ones from Kevin? He's an OG. That's how you know. Oh, no demon. Damn. For those who aren't familiar, back in the day, it was not trivial to know when a file changed, especially on other operating systems. Like on Mac and Linux, you could kind of know. But man, Windows and identifying when files changed, obnoxious. Why would you need this? Well, if you're working on a project and you want to trigger a new build, Watchman is what you would use for that. Watchman and things like it are now built into most build tools, but for a long time they weren't. And this is actually made by Meta of all people because they wanted a better experience for their gigantic repositories when one file changed to trigger a new build. And God, this was the worst thing to set up back in the day. It has gotten significantly better since, thankfully, but for a long time, this is how we would set up watchers. And it was a bunch of custom commands just to make your code rerun when you made a change. Theoretically, with this new version of Node, FNM use current. I thought you said current would work, Gabriel. Cool. Theoretically, I should be able to go to my sandbox folder. We'll make dir, uh 22 test, cd22 test, touch index.js, sure. Console.log, hello world. And now if I node dash dash watch index.js, hello world. But if I go back in here and say, don't forget to subscribe. Seriously though, guys, subscriptions are free on YouTube. Just hit the button. It's right below. 
you watch all of these videos, if you're watching this one now and you want to keep up with this news, you should probably be subscribed. Anyways, now when I save it, there you go. It runs immediately. I want to quickly see how fast it is though. So speed test. It should be pretty immediate. I'm saving now. Yeah. How nice is that? This this should have been in Node forever ago. Like this has been in Bun from day one, obviously. Like instantaneous. Just, yeah. So we will even set up VS Code to save on change so that it will rerun immediately. So yeah. Regardless, Node should have had this a while ago. It's really nice to see. A vanilla Node stack is becoming more and more viable where you don't need a bunch of build tools to have a decent experience. Okay, yes, fair point, Zico. Technically, watch is not stable, but it was it's no longer experimental. I know it's it's okay, it is actually stable. Never mind. Yeah, node watch is now stable. That's dope. Is this the first stable watcher that is an external package? We'll take it. It's a nice change. Anyways, that's enough about watch mode. Ignore the rough cut. We got to talk about WebSockets. The browser compatible implementation of WebSocket, previously behind the dash dash experimental WebSocket, will be enabled by default. This provides a WebSocket client to Node without external dependencies. Note this is for a client, not for a server. This is so you can connect to a WebSocket server somewhere else. Still huge, still hype, very excited. There's a lot of pain in doing WebSocket stuff. If you're not really familiar with Undishi, it is how HTTP and fetch calls tend to work in Node. If you use fetch in Node, it's technically based on Undishi instead of being based on Node. We're calling it in DC again. You got the right pronunciation stuck in my head. Thanks a lot. Gabriel, as always, coming out clutch. Yeah, Node.js in DC. WebSocket. Yep, you get the idea. It's pretty easy now to create a WebSocket agent that lets you receive and possibly even dispatch WebSockets. Good stuff. The history of WebSockets in Node is insane. You WebSockets still probably my most easily recommended solution. If you're not already familiar with UWebSocket, it's a very absurdly optimized C++ and C-based WebSocket server, but you can actually use this in Node seamlessly with UWebSocket.js, which calls the C code directly. So very, very handy way to host a WebSocket server that's hilariously fast. It's 8.5 times faster than Fastify, 10 times faster than Socket.io, and uh, it's also the built-in web server for Bun, even though UWebSocket is for Node, and it runs 80% faster than Bun's implementation using the Node one. That's insane. You, you get the idea. It's very, very fast. So more and more Node and WebSockets become a viable path. Also, one more fun fact about Socket.io, for those who don't know, you've probably heard of Socket.io because it's been the standard for WebSockets and Node for a long time now. What you might not have known is who the original creator was. Guillermo Roche, who is also the creator of Next.js and the CEO of Vercel, is the original creator of Socket.io. One other fun thing that happened today, and it's actually pretty uh, sentimental that this all happened at once. Today's also the day that Next has passed Socket.io in NPM downloads. I think this all lines up very well. Pretty cool day. Anyways, Glob and Glob Sync, yet another thing that probably should have been here a long time ago. Similar to how Watch Mode kills things like Watchman and Node Daemon, Glob and Glob Sync kill a bunch of random packages. Because previously, if you wanted to select things in the format of a glob, you really couldn't. If you don't know what a glob is, I'm sure we can find an example in here. For await const entry of glob star star slash star dot js. This lets you select all of the files in this directory and below it that have a dot js extension. And it returns them as an array, so we can just iterate through all of them asynchronously. This is such elegant, simple code that really should have been part of JavaScript a long time ago. And I'm really hyped. This is now part of the browser. Chat's going to be mad that I said no daemon instead of node mon because it's node monitor. I know. Let me have some fun. Just like chat jippity, you got to give me some wiggle room, guys. You get the idea. Anyways, glob is hype. Probably should have been in there a while ago. There's also a pretty big performance improvement of abort signal specifically. This release enhances the efficiency of creating an abort signal instance, leading to significantly improved performance in fetch and the test runner. Didn't think about how this would affect fetch. That's actually huge. Good stuff. Fetching should be less slow in node now. Nice change. Very nice change. They also left a call to action I think is very valuable because they want to get more information from the community. They actually have a survey that they put together in order for people like you, myself, and whoever else uses Node heavily to give their feedback on what Node is doing and what we do and don't like about it. Highly recommend doing this survey if you're interested in these types of things. I think it's important that they get feedback from the greater Node community. So give it a look. I'll leave a link in the description if you're curious. That's all I got on this one though. Seems like a pretty cool release and I'm certainly hyped to get upgraded. What about you? Are you hyped about this release? Are you gonna upgrade soon or are you gonna wait until we can use it in Lambda? Let me know in the comments and until next time, peace nerds.